up guys Vaughn here today and today we're gonna take a look at the Nintendo Switch um, for a while now there has been a ton of news on a lot of upcoming games for the Nintendo Switch and it gets to the point where I have to ask myself is it time is it time to finally take this serious now because there's a lot of these coming and there's just something about this Nintendo Switch that bothers me now it didn't bother me at first but it's actually starting to get on my nerves now because uh, it has something to do with this handheld mode here and if you look at this pro controller here you know that everything on this pro controller is great and these are basically what you need to make a perfect control on any system whether it's handheld or consoles so you have to have analog sticks face buttons shoulder buttons trigger buttons uh, if you have a rear button, maybe that would be good too. And most importantly of all, a D-pad. And the D-pad could be used for a whole slew of things. You can use it to tot in Smash Brothers. You can use it as directionals, alternative to the analogs in 2D games. Or it could be it could be on first person shooters where you can change weapons, camera angles, whatever. Same thing with the analogs as well and that's just something that does not happen on the switch in handheld mode because you don't get a d-pad all you get are buttons that acts as a d-pad and that is a no-no to me not to mention that for the switch now <laughs> A lot of developers are not releasing like high-tech AAA games. Most of them are actually releasing like old-fashioned games, retro style games, or should I say re-releases of retro style games. I mean just a, just a few weeks ago we heard that Capcom is not only going to bring Mega Man to the Switch, but the entire collections of Street Fighter in there too and I was like come on I barely could handle these buttons on Ultra Street Fighter 2 how am I gonna hold how am I gonna handle them on 12 different versions of Street Fighter <laughs> and that would be mayhem right here and it, it's already difficult for me to handle Neo Geo with this too and Neo Geo games on the switch are awesome man though I, I download a lot of those nowadays and those are those are the reason I play my Switch because without Neo Geo, I wouldn't be touching the Switch here either. Not to, not to say that all the Switch games are bad, they're good, but I just enjoy those Neo Geo games and they are the reason why I'm going to review this product today. Because uh, with the Pro Controller, you do realize that this is the perfect control if you want to play it on the console however if you look at another system here the Nintendo 3DS you can tell the reason I love portables like this is because of its alternative here it has an analog and a d-pad it also has this weird sticks too but that's not a bothersome to me however for the switch it does not have that and today we're gonna change that we're gonna take off these two joy cons because we don't need them right now in fact we still need them we st I can still use these whenever I wanted to play like tabletop mode or dock mode with friends so these are not going anywhere they're still gonna be with me but I'm going to replace these with something else strictly and exclusively for handheld mode because I'm definitely not going to bother with these anymore in handheld mode handheld mode is going to belong to these two guys so if you look at it these 
are the two Joy Cons that I got. They are they come with the these two custom shell here. As you can tell, uh, they they're already done. They have like the D-pad replace all those buttons, and the the other side, this one is still the same, but these look much better and feel much better because of this added D-pad right here. So we're gonna try these out and see if they can do so, a lot better than what those two can do. Because I do not want to play all my 2D games with buttons like these or like those. So let's plug them right now. Um, and let's see how these Joy-Con Pro feels like. Now I, I just call them Joy-Con Pro. They're not that's not really what they are, but they are Joy-Cons and they do have all the functions of a Pro controller. So that's really the important part. So they have D-pads, face buttons, analog sticks, start, select buttons, L and R buttons, and bumper buttons. So let's turn it on and let's check it out. See if um any of these um any of these D-pad stuff works. <laughs> so here we are. And here are all the games that I have. If you go to all the software, I do have a fair amount of games. So yeah, I all my games are growing now, so <laughs> So we're gonna try Ultra Street Fighter because that one is the one that uses the D-pad the most. We'll see how that one fares. You can see me here in my Switch. <laughs> so yeah, let's see how it plays. Now we gotta turn that down a little bit. So. Alright, all right. so yeah, everything is already good. Now play with this D-pad here and see how good it fares. I'm gonna choose Akuma. And I'm gonna play him with that outfit right there. And we're fighting Guile. Let's see how... Uh, how it goes. I gotta say, the D-pad works great. <laughs> oh man, moves came out fluently too. Oh shit. Man, guys keep spamming me with that sonic boom. Yeah, there, there is no problem with any of the moves. <laughs> that works great, man. This D-pad makes all the difference. I don't have to, uh, I don't have to travel through directional like I used to with those four buttons. See, when I when I do the hurricane kick, all I have to do is motion like this, and it would just do the hurricane kick once I used once I hit the attack button. Yeah, the fireball. That one is usually the most difficult to perform. Uh, Akuma's like Akuma's red fireball that he used to he, to do. He had to do a mo a half circle back and then press punch. That's the most difficult projectile to perform in this game. And with this D-pad, it works flawlessly. I have no problem with that now. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, fight Ryu here. I'll fight him using this nice little D-pad. Oh my god, this feels so good. Way better than those four buttons. If I knew that I can get this D-pad sooner, I'll be using these all last year. Uh, man, having these is the best New Year surprises ever. <laughs> Now this is the this is the first time I actually tried these Joy-Con D-pad here, so
There he goes. So, this D-pad looks great in Ultra Street Fighter 2 here. Alright, so let's try it with another game. Let's try Mighty... Yeah, let's let's try this one. Mighty Gunvolt Burst. This is one of those uh, Mega Man style 2D games. And this one, the D-pad... This, this one requires the D-pad the most because you constantly have to side-scroll. So this is uh, zero type characters. You can tell there's also some mighty number nine characters in here too, like Beck here. Anyways, let's try Beck. I mean, I really wanted to play that 3DS versions of. Um, let's let's go to this one. Yeah, I really want to play that 3DS versions of Mighty Number no. Nine. It never came out, so I guess this one will do. <laughs> So as you can see, it go it works fine. And yeah, we can All right. Feels so good. Feels just like uh you're playing an actual handheld now. Especially when you don't have to deal with those four uh, crappy directional buttons. There he goes. Okay, let's go up here. Oh my god. There he goes. So I gotta go kill these two guys. Kept picking on me. There he goes. Alright, got some invincibility there. Okay, so we're closer to the end. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's mighty gum gumbers, mighty gumbo burst. <laughs> that's a very complicated name to say. And then there's the original Super Mario Bros. the arcade game. So this plays a lot like the original, but then it also has a little bit of the lost levels in there. So. It's actually not that hard, but it's not that simple either. So there's minimal changes to the game. But it is challenging a little bit if you if you have never played before. They don't have the same stuff as the console version. And I had to say, I wouldn't be playing this game if I still have those four buttons. So this D-pad makes a whole lot of difference there it goes so this is one of the difference right here usually the power ups is down, down there in this one is up here so here you got the fire flowers upstairs instead of downstairs So, and the star man is still at the same place, but this other power up that used to be on top is gone now. So, you actually have two tries to get power ups. If you screw up, you screw up. <laughs> so, that's pretty much what the arcade version tries to do. It tries to 
and tries to screw you up sometimes by not giving you that many stuff to upgrade. But uh, yeah, that's Super Mario Bros. right there versus Super Mario Bros. Here's another uh, differences in the second level here. So we'll go down the pipe. The two Goombas are still the same, but once you get further, the levels start getting more and more different. So right here, you got a turtle instead of a Goomba. In the original, it is a Goomba. The turtles was the turbo. The turtle is added so that you don't have time to like hit the bricks. <laughs> I think that's what Nintendo was aiming for. And then you can kill that, grab the star man. Another difference over here. Yeah, that block used to be a power up, now it's nothing. But the coin block is still there though. So you can still get more coins. And then the one the the one up mushroom is actually the power up. So if you look at that. They're trying to make it hard for you to actually upgrade. So unless you're big like me, you're not going to be able to grab that thing. <laughs> so yeah, the bonus stage is still the same though. So that's one good thing. But everything else, almost almost um, every level has some kind of minor changes. You don't, you're not going to be able to see any of the major changes until on the later level, especially on World 1, or oh, World 3, Level 1. But other than that, everything else seems to be almost the same. Uh, here you can see these ladders, There's, they are much smaller than they were in the original. And they cut off this part of the pipe, uh, the block in the pipe. So now you, you can't do that minus world trick anymore. <laughs> so all you gotta do is just go up here and go to the end of the level. So yeah, um, that's versus Super Mario Bros. there for you. So yeah, it, it's a pretty fun game. Uh, let's try one more game and then I'll give you my final opinion on this um, on this d-pad here because it feels really nice now so let's go over here to all my big libraries of games we can choose and yeah um, as you can tell let's try the mummy d master this is one of those metroid style games that i enjoy and let's see how it plays you want we can turn the volume up a little bit now see you hear that nice little little tunes from the game come on show me the game this this game is notorious for these stupid low time but it's made by way forward so it has to be awesome <laughs> that's that's a good little soundtrack right there Having to play this game on the go is great, <laughs> especially with this Joy-Con here. So yeah, let's see where I'm at. Come on. See, look at that. The low time is very long. Oh my god, it's really loud. Let's turn it back down. Yeah, um, I am at this cavern right here. Fortunately, the boss is on the other side, but I'll show you some of the levels here before we face him. It's a mix between Metroid and a little bit of Contra. You do have an arsenal of weapons. So if I keep going up here, 
I have to say, the D-pad works really well here. I don't feel any uh, sense of inaccuracy. And my thumb is not as tired as it was when I'm controlling the four buttons. Animation for this game looks really good too. Especially when you see that skeleton there. <laughs> Oh my gosh, poison pool. <laughs> like Metro, it has these endless monsters that keeps popping up from the ground. And then it's just like the monster that pops up from the pipe in Metro as well. So yeah, like Metro, they play similar roles. I think if you die, um, if you die, then your soul got re your uh, character here got revived as a as a zombie or something. <laughs> but if you can go and kill that zombie, then um, you can retrieve your uh, all your equipment back. But here I'm dying, so I can't do that. So here's how I die. So, he dies, this part makes him return back as a zombie, so in my new game, if I go back to this area, that guy will try to kill me. <laughs> so I'm not going to go back to that guy anymore, because if I go back there, he'll kill me, so I'll just have to keep going. That guy does not, that, that guy was not the one that has my equipment though. The guy that had my equipment is on the other side here, and we'll go face him right now. So this guy right here, this is the guy that had my equipment. There he goes. And there it is. Um, your, all your gear has been reclaimed. Although if you die here, then you will lose all your equipment. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> so this is the boss of this level. Fortunately, um, I this is as far as how much I got to this game because um, I haven't been that far yet. <laughs> I'm still playing other games too, so <laughs> yeah. But the boss is actually not that bad. Um, one thing that I wish they kept from it is the aiming part because there's no button you can use to aim you have to use the d-pad and this is the part where I say that the d-pad came in really handy came really handy is because of this because you it's really hard to aim diagonal with just those buttons with the d-pad you can always just hit the diagonal and then heal diagonal shoot the monster I wish I got some better weapons because <laughs> this boss is really hard. So yeah, I actually die right there. And that's the same. Yeah, that that will be the guy we're gonna kill next to get our equipment. So, anyways, yeah, that's pretty much all the game we have to test with this Joy-Con here. So let's turn this off. Yeah, I hate turning this off because you have to hold that button for a, like a long time. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the these Joy-Cons are really good. Um, I love, I really love this D-pad. It works very, very accurately. It's like makes all. It's like night and day compared to this part right here. <laughs> it you your thumb does not have to travel through mountains like this one, and this one just slides. Playing Ultra Street Fighter is better now. Playing 2D games is better now. And I'm just glad that I got this now because there will be a lot of Capcom 2D goodness coming soon. So I am actually prepared now. If I had to give these Joy-Con Pro a grade, I have to give them 
a big S because they are actually superb they don't I mean they don't injure your thumb and um, they make all your 2d games really really fun to play especially Ultra Street Fighter 2 I have to say Ultra Street Fighter this this makes me play Ultra Street Fighter 2 in handheld form more because um, before that I didn't really bother with handheld mode that much I pretty much play with this but I am traveling a lot now and I want to be I want to be able to bring something comfortable with me especially if I'm going to play a lot of 2d games and the switch does have a lot of 2d games a lot of them if you see my collections of games a while ago you can tell that there's a lot of them especially yeah with all the Metroid clones out there Zelda clones out there and Mega Man clones out there and even Sonic you can tell we really need this and I'm really glad that they have these as alternative now so Joy-Con Pro, D-Pad, all these stuff Definite S I'm not throwing these away though these are still useful whenever we're gonna like playing in dock mode uh, with multiplayer and all that stuff so they can have a choice of these or this or this but handheld mode I am keeping these exclusively on handheld modes so whenever we're playing dock it'll be these three but handheld mode it'll be these two so I'm Vone uh, if you guys want to buy these I think they sell them on eBay for like around 150 but if you want if you want to create your own I think AliExpress has a bunch of custom like case and d-pad for you too I mean that that's if you're technical enough to make them I'm not that technical so I'm I bought the one that's already made ready so <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what I do I, I just don't want to tinker with all these but I do have to say they did a really good job with this d-pad playing Street Fighter is no problem playing playing the mummy D master is no problem blaster master zero is no problem Shantae no problem um, that Zelda clone I think it's called the tail of something and yeah, that that one is also okay too that I forgot what the name is called but every 2d games in here is okay especially Sonic Mania as well uh, it's kind of sad that you can't play Sonic Mania in uh, in like tabletop mode because if you try to use these classic controllers with Sonic Mania in tabletop mode it will not work However, if you play in handheld mode like I play right now, it works just fine. Of course, you if you have these, it's not going to be that comfortable. But if you have this D-pad, it works really well. Just like if you're using a pro controller. So, I'm Vone, and um, this is all I have for you guys. So, it's a really, really nice product. Um, definitely worthwhile to get if you want a, a suitable d-pad for your handheld experience so yeah so you guys have a great day thank you for watching and I'll see you later